that we've gone through all seven lesson plans that are part of the Germs Away curriculum, there's a few extra pieces that come with the um, binder itself that I didn't touch on today. The first one is a sheet called Clean Your Hands that goes through the actual steps for hand washing. So it talks about not only times when it's very important to wash our hands, but the actual six steps that we want to wash our hands. It specifically says that we need to always remember to wash between our fingers and under jewelry. So, you know, making sure that we move around our rings and our watches. And at the bottom, it notes that if soap and water is not available, that using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer is the next best thing. We are promoting the use of soap and water as the first line of defense. So, you know, ideally everyone will have access to a sink with running water and soap and paper towels. But obviously in today's world, that isn't always a possibility. And so using a hand sanitizer is the next best thing. We always want to make sure if we're going to be using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer, that it has at least 60% alcohol in it because formulations that have less than that have been proven to be less effective. Um, you want to make sure you put enough on your hands that when you rub your hands around, that you're, you do have enough on that you can actually still get to the back of your hands in between your fingers before it dries. So sometimes people put on such a tiny little amount that by the time they go like this, everything's dry and they kind of go through the motions just to go through the motions. So you do want to have enough on your hands so that they remain moist for a few seconds and have an opportunity for the alcohol to evaporate. If you are using alcohol-based hand sanitizer with, with young people, just want to make sure that they're not accidentally ingesting it and that it is just staying on their hands. Um, another sheet that comes with the kit is on skin infections specifically. So what it has on here is that not all infections need to be treated with antibiotics just bacterial infections. We don't want viruses treated with antibiotics because they will not, it will not help. And that it's very, very important that when we are prescribed an antibiotic, that we use up all of it ourselves. So we need to take it in the right amount and at the right time that the doctor or nurse practitioner has prescribed and that we complete all of it. If we are always taking our antibiotics properly, we will never have leftovers, which is what we want. Sometimes if we are put in an antibiotic for seven days or 10 days, we start to feel really good after a few days and we think, why on earth am I needing to take the rest of this medicine? So you take it for your four days, you feel great, you think I'm gonna save the rest of it for next time and pop it to the side. And what happens is that enough of that bacteria that was causing the infection has been killed off for the symptoms to be gone, but there's still bacteria left there causing problems and they um, now they know how you're going to try to kill it. So they know that you're going to try taking this antibiotic again and this allows them to mutate so that they might become resistant, which means that next time when you take that antibiotic, they know how not to die. So they just swim around in it and have a good old time and it doesn't cure your infection anymore. And this is where resistance comes from. If we always took our antibiotics properly, we would never have leftovers. And if we don't have leftovers, then we don't have antibiotics to pass on to our friends and neighbors when they get sick. You also never wanna take antibiotics that weren't prescribed for you. It's really important that you always see a practitioner before taking them, because there might be situations where antibiotics are not right. And if you take someone else's, you might be treating an infection improperly, and you may very well not have enough to actually cure whatever the problem is, and you're just setting yourself up for more problems. Um, if there are skin infections, and then you want to make sure that the infection itself is being kept clean. So again, washing it with soap and water. Um, and that if it's draining or open, so if you, it's kind of sticky still or anything's draining, so any liquid or anything's coming off of it, then really important that it be covered, um, at both at home and when you're going out in public. And this stops germs from sticking to it, and it also stops the infection itself from being spread to other people. Now, this can be covered just with a simple Band-Aid or with a dressing of some kind that's taped down. So as soon as something usually has scabbed over, then if your doctor or nurse practitioner says it's okay, then it can be left open to the air, but when it hasn't, then it's really important that it be covered. So you take off the dressing to wash it once or twice a day, whatever you've been advised, and put a brand new clean dressing back on. But you don't want to leave these wounds open to the air because that's how we end up spreading infections. The last things that are in our binder are some hand washing posters that have been adapted by the NARP group. 
and they are available um, to download through the website and you have a copy of each one that also comes with the curriculum. So the first one on how to wash your hands. The second one, again, on hand washing. And the third one that talks more specifically about the most important times to wash your hands. Now what's important to think about with hand washing posters is that people start to get fatigued. If you have the same posters up in your bathroom or by your sink um, and they've been there for months and months or years and years, people get so used to them that they don't even notice them anymore. And so the purpose of them is lost. So sometimes it's good to have some different ones that you can rotate through periodically so that there's always something different for people to look at and they will actually pay attention to it. So these three posters hopefully can be incorporated into the other hand washing posters you might have that sit in your washrooms or your classrooms, your school or your community or even your home. And again, you can rotate through them periodically. Now if you have any questions about the curriculum itself or are interested in getting a copy of the curriculum, um, they, you can do either through the website, which is www.narp.ca. And if you click on contact us and ask for the curriculum, the whole thing will be emailed out to you free of cost. And you can print it off yourself and, um, you know, hopefully go ahead with the curriculum. Most of the pieces can just be bought through a dollar store. And the black light and um, glow germ cream are one thing that need to be ordered and contact information on how to order that is available um, through the website or a lot of public health offices will already have a black light and glow germ and often um, educators are able to borrow through your local public health or health center. Mm -hmm.